Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our third and last Visualizing Histories Artist Talk featuring Jel Suarez and Sibling Song. My name is Anna, and together with Sophia, we are both from the Museum Collective. The Museum Collective is a Filipino collective of museum and culture workers, students, educators, and artists that aspires to empower, connect, and promote contextualized and meaningful practice that responds to the needs of the times. The collective was established on August 21, 2019, and on 2020 was awarded an Asian Cultural Council grant. Through the grant, Visualizing Histories was created. Visualizing Histories is an attempt to address the ever-changing landscape of historiography and memorialization. It seeks to explore art production in contemporary art vehicle to communicate difficult and unresolved narratives from us and make sense of it in the current time. Most of the question, how does regional contemporary art aid in forms of historiography and remembering? Three Cambodian artists who were born after the Khmer Rouge, Chulai Mek, Kanya Hul, si Song Sikling, and three Filipino artists who were born after the martial law dictatorship and EDSA revolution, Jot Daniela, Yuni Sanchez, and Jel Suarez, together with Luna Dito and Sasa Art Projects, have shared a space to converse about their backgrounds, their histories, and their own understanding of truth. To create a more intimate space of exchange, each Cambodian and Filipino artist was paired to converse and to explore collaborative approaches in making art. Today, we will be hearing from our last artist pair, Seekling Song and Angel Suarez. And this afternoon session will be moderated by Sasa Art Projects. Sasa Art Projects is a Cambodian artist-run space dedicated to experimental and critical contemporary art practices. It was founded in 2010 by Cambodian arts collective Steve Selapak and operated from the historic and vibrant apartment complex known as the White Building until 2017, when the building was demolished for new development. At its new location, Sasa Art Projects has shifted towards a stronger engagement with Cambodian young artists and art graduates while continuing to build a deeper dialogue with artists within Asia through its creative education programs, exhibitions, its signature Pisaot artist residency, and other special collaborative projects. Sasa Art Projects is an experimental mechanism which addresses Cambodia's lack of infrastructure for contemporary art education and engagement by creating space for critical discussion. We believe that by not being bound to a rigid organizational structure, SASA Art Projects is able to evolve organically to adapt to the changing context and needs of communities with which we work. All right, so without further ado, I would like to turn over the virtual floor to SASA Art Projects. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Uh, my name is Lina. I'm uh, at working at Sasa Art Project as a public program coordinator with uh, together my colleague uh, Dara Kung. So, without further ado, let uh, me just uh, introduce our artist, uh, Song Sit Leng. Uh, Sidley uh, was born in 1997. He is a photographer, filmmaker, and artist based in Penang. Originally from Kampung Thom Province, Sidley finished his media med in media management degree from Royal University of Phnom Penh. He joined the group exhibition Possibility Transferring and Passing as a Art Project and directed a film Psycho, which was selected in. At the Muxot Film Festival Cambodian uh, highlight in 19, uh, 2019. While also working as the production intern at Anti Archive Film Company, he was one of the five awardees for the Creative Generation uh, Third in 2020 and simultaneously directed another film, Blossom in the Summer. He worked as the assistant lecture, lecturer for the third generation of contemporary and documentary photography art class at Sasa Art Project, and also was invited to join 
a PISA artist in residency at Sosa Art Project in 2021. Hello, Sit Leng. Okay, hello, Bong. Hello, everyone. Okay, you may continue. <laughs> so I'm sharing my screen now. Um, can you see it, Mom? Yeah. Yes. Um. Uh, okay. So as you may know, I'm Sitling. Uh, I'm an independent photographer and filmmaker based in uh, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Um, so first of all, I would like to bring you to the time uh, that I got into the ad. Um, so bear with me. Um, in the Okay, in the midst of my family financial crisis during my sophomore year of, in 2017, I had to take brilliant jobs to support my studies. On top of this, uh, my love life fell apart and my best friend and I breaking up. Uh, my grad fell and I could no longer concentrate in class. I feel like I had been living two different lives in day-to-day -day life. Everyone saw a son, a brother, a student, a friend, a teenager. But I saw someone struggling with clinical depression and anxiety disorder. I was devastated and lost during those years. And thought of uh, dropping out and giving up on life a few times. I went to art galleries and exhibitions alone to isolate myself from the world I had known. This is I found Sosa Art Projects. Joining the contemporary and documentary and documentary photography class at Sosa Art Project in 2019 was a huge transition and was even more significant because I worked simultaneously as a production intern at anti archive Film Company. This experience shifted my perception and enlightened me to think more critically about current social issues I have encountered, such as mental health, discrimination toward LGBTQ people, and prostitution. During that time, I discovered that art had the power to heal my internal pain and fix my broken peace, empowering me to express my thoughts and feelings with the world. Through the creation of art, I understand my own hidden emotion and identities, find a sense of peace. So in 2019, I directed Psycho, uh, my first short film, conveying my mental experience and unresolved. Lingering from the past helped me refocus my existence and live in the present. What's important, I found myself working on uh, in the process of working on efficiency for the contemporary and documentary photography class exhibition. For this project, I follow a sex worker I had met. Her story made me empathetic and compassionate as uh, she went through physical and emotional abuse from her former husband. On top of this, a gas explosion left her poor with a uh, key lot uh, scars on her right hand and face. I developed a respect towards sex worker after that. So now I want to show you a little, uh, show you uh, some photo I document during the process. Hãy subscribe cho 
podcast mana yang kita harus yang kita harus yang kita harus So I now yearn to unearth the meaning of life by exploring and documenting the complexity of humanity. Because I believe art has the power to heal the pain from the past, I directed Blossom in the Summer, a documentary film to understand the inner soul of a gay artist dancing to preserve Rokbam Kabak Boran or Khmer Class Corden and thereby evolving contemporary dance in the process. By observing others and sharing their story, I reflect on and re-evaluate my values and beliefs, establishing a stronger sense of my own identity and allowing myself to grow and heal. So now uh, I want to show you a trailer of the film.
So uh, in the uh, um, in the late 2020, after I graduated, I got commissioned to direct a documentary film about a local hip hop artist. His name is Rifai, and after the shootings, uh, I uh, tra while traveling along the street, I accidentally saw a. Uh, uh, Buddha Hello light shine in the shop um, on the street and while while the hip hop music playing the car and I uh, suddenly I felt like um, the sound and the lights missing together so well and and it genuinely allowed me to explore the idea of Buddha lights and I developed so let me show you this. So I developed the work uh, during my residency and as a project in the early 2021. <laughs> So uh, that's all for my work and my story. And yeah, I want, I want to uh, yeah, back to uh, join uh, visualizing his story project. Um, really, I think this project is really uh, is a great opportunity for me to uh, explore the idea uh, of working with international artists remotely. And uh, at the same time, uh, we, we got to, to share the idea and to ex experiment the work and to show our work like, and to, and also basically uh, to know each other uh, more. Yeah. Thank you so much, that's all from me. Thank you, Selene. So uh, for uh, those who would like to have any question, please uh, wait until uh, Jill finished. Uh, so I would like to uh, introduce you, uh, Jill Suarez, uh, to talk about her work. Uh, Jill Suarez, born in 1990, is a self-taught artist born in Manila and based in Bacolo Negro, Occidental. Her work is built on the collide making and openly informed by the physicality of things. Jell primarily moved to as a collector, hunter, deconstructor, arranger. She's approached collide as a way of responding to visual phenomena by uh, restraining image as open code and text in the process of becoming. She has been exhibiting her work since 2014 and has particip participated in uh, at many art fairs like uh, in Manila, in Singapore, Hong Kong, and uh, she also a artist in residency. Uh, was uh, she was also a artist in residency of La Cas uh, in 2019 and at Ribundahan in 2017. Uh, her solo show was uh, exhibited in West Gallery uh, 2018 and 2020, and Mo Space Gallery in 2019 was shortlisted for the Antonio Art Award, where she became the first uh, recipient of its Italian Embassy uh, Purchase Prize. So, uh, welcome, Jill. Hi, hi everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen. Um, can everybody see my screen now? Um, so uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Jal Suarez, a visual artist from the Philippines. 
Um, I was born in Manila, and uh, but I have been moving from one place to another for the past years. Uh, currently, I am based in Bacolod, uh, a city in the province of Negros Occidental. And uh, I am a self-taught artist, and my works are built on the practice of collage making. So these are some of my works. Uh, I, I move as a collector of things like books, um, found objects, and I, I deconstruct them or create new lives for them or arrangements as a way, I guess, of responding to these images. And oftentimes it turns into like an archive or a, like an unconscious mapping of images into a landscape. So uh, this was from my solo exhibition last year at West Gallery. Um, so last year, during the height of the pandemic, I had like few things with me uh, when I was locked down in Manila. So most of the works that I produced um, uh, came from the surplus shops and the things that I have gathered while I was uh, in Manila. And I guess it's when I started um, creating more portable objects that I could, I could bring with me anywhere. And it's when I uh, also began creating um, more assemblages and artist books. Um, yesterday, I also opened my solo exhibition at Drawing Room. So, I'm just going to show you some of the works that I produce. So my, my practice is very organic. Like I don't really begin with, an, with a fixed idea, uh, but I let the, I guess, physicality of what I collect um, inform my process or the things that I will do. So I let one thing become a prompt for another, and that's why I probably, you know, um, do collages. <laughs> and I like manipulate, manipulating things with my hands. And yeah, I guess my, my process, um, the whole process of my art making begins with uh, the, the act of gathering my um, uh, objects for the work. Like it's a very, um, crucial uh, stage of my art making. And yeah, I guess my works are continuously in a state of reconfiguration. Um, I graduated with a course in psychology and I actually used to be a childhood educator. So this was me as a preschool teacher in my early to mid twenties. And recently I noticed that my works are, uh, or I am seeking or going back to teaching, not necessarily in the classroom setting, but um, through engaging with art education programs. So when the museum collective, um, Anna and Sophia approached me to um, join visual Visualizing Histories, uh, uh, I was excited because uh, they told me how this was geared towards um, education and collaboration. And um, personally, I am a, a very meek person. Like I, I am not very outspoken with when it comes to my political leanings because uh, sometimes I am afraid that I might say the wrong things. But uh, uh, I'd, like, I'd like to give more background about what I do, but I think the Museum Collective taught me specifically because of this work I did in 2016, uh, 2017 uh, during the height of uh, extra, the extrajudicial killings here in the Philippines. Um, in 2016, 2017 was uh, the height of Duterte's war on drugs. Um, 
in the same year, I also had my residency in Malaysia, in Rimbondahan. And most of the conversations were filled with questions with what was happening in the country uh, about the number of people killed every day and the thousands and thousands of men, women, and children who were um, becoming victims of the um, drug war killings. And I guess I, as a child, uh, childhood educator, uh, this has created a lot of impact on me. That's why it had a huge effect on the landscape of the work that was produced in 2017. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so uh, what struck me, I guess, was the impact that it did on children and the hundreds of them who became what the government calls as collateral damage. And yeah, it, this had, a, I guess, a, a huge impact on my headspace and thus it affected the landscape of my work. Um, in 2017, I uh, collaborated with a friend, uh, Raya Martin, who was also a filmmaker. And this was the time I started collecting images of drug war killings. Uh, this was intentionally in black and white and very small because uh, some of the images are very graphic and triggering. So these are the offcuts from the collagist I used for the series of works that I uh, that was produced. Uh, I still have these with me, the photos because uh, I think it was hard for me to uh, throw or discard these um, images because it, um, it was quite heavy to just throw them away. Uh, I, I remember being sick to my stomach while I was doing these collages because there was a lot of graphic violence in them and there was a lot to unpack. Um, have you guys ever experienced um, looking at an image and being able to smell to smell it? Like <laughs> while I was cutting these images, like I could smell the blood that uh, yeah I can you know I can uh, it was very hard for me to do the work but uh, but I guess during that time, um, it, uh, it, it was like a form of like, that, that's why it was hard for me to talk about these works because revisiting these types of um, um, history is psychological trauma in itself. And it's hard for me to talk about it. Uh, the works I did for the show was shown in underground gallery and actually it was very strange for me to see the works on the walls of the gallery. But I guess during that time I also wanted the people to see how this was becoming a, uh, the waste of life was becoming like a daily natural thing for us to see in the social media. So, um, and I guess I was able to express, since I'm not very outspoken, I was able to express my anger or cutting these images violently. I, through, through collages, I was able to show my rage to what was happening. And in these horror scenes or in this landscape, you would see, you could hardly see any bodies anymore because what's left of them are just covers of you know fabrics, uh, tarpaulin, garbage bags, and the, the tapes that were wrapped around the bodies. And yeah, so it was difficult for me to, lead it, to do these works, but the, the toll of the drug wars uh, has never ended with the killing of the drug suspects. Like It extends to their families and children, and that's why it has affected me. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Sorry for the photo, Dora. <laughs> um, 
Apologies that it, uh, the, the previous images were very heavy. Uh, so for visualizing histories, I was uh, paired with Sikling Song and uh, our exchanges for this uh, collaboration uh, transpired through Facebook messages, like audio calls, and mostly emails. And I think the collaboration on through screen was both new to uh, was new to the both of us. And I guess the prompt of our work was uh, came from uh, the idea of how can we make our um, experience physical, even though we are remotely working. So in our messenger conversations, we Dora shares a lot of meme, like for example, uh, doppelganger of Manny Pacquiao in Cambodia. Um, we shared a lot of food, like for example, the uh, the shaved ice dessert in Cambodia, and like in the Philippines, we have also halo halo. So in this shared conversations, we were able to find a similarity between us, and. Yeah, he, he has been sending me a lot of photos and images. And uh, through the, uh, sorry, <laughs> through these conversations, I think I was able to feel uh, connected to him. Like, even though we were not together, we feel like um, this has sort of been a residency for us. And in most of the, exchanges, I felt that our experiences are much connected as Southeast um, Asian. So we also started, yeah, so these are the some of the images uh, Dora sent to me through Messenger. So I feel like I'm also with them in their trips and Yeah, so I also feel like I am there <laughs> with Anna, Sophia, and all their um, uh, daily drinking and eating. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so wait, I don't know how to stop. All right, so. Since uh, the both of us are, I think, occupied with our works, we started this email thread uh, of conversations wherein we shared a lot of what we uh, go through every day. And I guess um, through these email conversations, we were able to update each other at our own pacing and we were able to express um, ourselves better. Yeah, so I, I actually created an archive of our emails. Uh, so I, I collected the images and the attachments of the email conversations that which we, uh, which we would like to share to the public so that uh, they can have an idea of how our exchanges went and maybe they can pick up something from that. So in this archive, like for example, um, sorry, I just did a screen record of the, uh, right there. So for example, in our emails, I was able to share to Dora what was happening in the country, like for example, the, since it is in, uh, election time here. So we were able to exchange to each other about the news and in that way, in that way, uh, using the mundane things in the process, we were able to understand each other's language. And we did not force any conversations about work in the first uh, during our first conversations. What we did was we talk about ourselves and our daily lives. And uh, I guess by telling stories to each other, we are also able to understand each other's 
history. And uh, I guess this became an alternative to the non-physical residency. And uh, our present stories became manifestations of our past or our histories. And I'm, I'm grateful for this um, project because I was also able to gain a friend from Dora. And, you know, I, I, every day I, like, I feel excited to document things and then share it to him through email. And then it, that in itself is a great um, help for me mentally and emotionally. Yeah, so that ends the presentation. Nice. Thank you so Thank much, Joe. Thank you. That's very informative of you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I did a lot of screen recording. <laughs> it's okay, Po. Thank you so much, uh, Sidley and Joe, for sharing your uh, artwork. So, uh, uh, I saw this is the, the process that you creating art and until now with the collaboration. Uh, talking about the collaboration before before that, can I just uh, share or maybe I ask a question for both of you first? Uh, if you would, uh, could you share us uh, like to see uh, the your work have been changing? For example. Uh, Dora was uh, thinking at as like a uh, place you can find yourself back uh, to stand on yourself. And that uh, also very interesting that uh, you are creating the film and uh, while working on, on the film, you also realize something that's very interesting. And for Jill, that you work, uh, your past work was uh, creating the collage and a book like in your work, uh, Reading Mountain, very beautiful. But then you also create an another medium with the work, um, with the collage and a uh, video. So uh, would you mind sharing uh, how have been like your art practice changed through time, like since you start working on it and until now, how have it been or how, how did it change? Um, for, uh, for me, I guess my practice changed a lot in terms of um, how I approach my art making. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before, I, 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 I focused a lot on um, giving meaning to my works, but now I just let myself um, be, become more organic with my process. Like uh, my art making becomes an extension of myself, uh, of myself and uh, I let it become a, a stress reliever of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why most of my works recently uh, changed into like small hand activities like book binding, um, paper making, and collaging. Uh, so yeah, I think it's it has become more of um, more of an extension of myself. Okay, thank you, Laura. Sitling. Um, would you mind asking that question again? Or? Yeah, uh, my question was like, uh, how how uh, have your app practice changed through time, from photography to filmmaking or things like that? Yeah. Mm, good question. Well, um, actually, I think um, that's not uh, it's not uh, changing much between photography and film because. Uh, when I start, uh, both of them, like when I when I start, I start with both of them together. So it like is grow together. But recently, I noticed that uh, my art practice is a bit uh, ch uh, changing a little bit into uh, installations or yeah, cause uh, recently with uh, with Open Studio with Sasa Art Project uh, for the uh, my after my residency, 
I, I did I did it with a 3D animation and installation. So it's uh yeah, it's I think it's um it's far beyond my my photography and film practice. Mm. Mm, thank you, thank you. But yeah, I think um I actually I also want want to like want to to be organic like uh, like to to let the, the work speak speaks uh itself, speak by itself but I think it's um it takes time to be like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. So uh beside that was uh there's uh, before I read the question from the audience, may I just uh, add one more question? So uh, how uh, for this question time for both for you, like uh, how do you know like well, what kind of medium are go to present the specific uh, certain kind of uh, idea or concept? Like as an artist, you uh, you choose to like uh, uh, for jail, yeah, you might uh, interested to do in making collage but maybe do you before you create the final work will you uh, like uh, thinking of created in another medium as well um in relation to your um question earlier i think my my work has also transformed uh, my collage works have also transformed into more um Three, three dimensional objects like naturally mm -hmm. my collages has turned into assemblages um yeah I, I, I do not start with an idea mostly mostly uh, my works are are built from what I collect and what I am drawn to so for example when I go to for example uh, surplus shops or um, thrift shops I, I just uh, it's like one thing uh, add up to another. Like mm -hmm. if I collect something and then find another thing, and then it becomes an accumulation of objects and images. And that from there, I, I, I can create something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Sarah, would you like thank to? You for... yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you, Lina. So uh, thank you, Tora and Chair, for your very beautiful presentation about your work and past, your art practice experience. So um, yeah, first of all, I like, would like to, uh, and also for um, people for attend now, thank you for your, your time and joining our program and the talk both of uh, Chair and Jit Ling. So my question is based on two both speakers. Based on your experience, collaboration, online residency, exchange knowledge, art practice, histories, and culture using by digital tool. So, what are the challenges to both of you face to using digital tool, digital translation for such conversation conversion? Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> what were the so? Uh, so so mm -hmm. what are the challenges to both of you okay. in using digital translation for for such con conversion? So um I guess for me the most difficult uh, the most challenging part is uh is keeping tabs with like for example replying to messages uh quickly in chat messenger. So uh, I'm not one to, to quickly respond to messages. So it has been difficult for me to um, connect digitally. That's why we see, uh, Dora and I started this um, thread of emails wherein we can better express ourselves at our own pacing. Uh, a second challenge I think for me is uh, well, the language, sometimes you couldn't understand each other. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, writing has helped us a lot express ourselves um, emotionally, understand the language of each other. Yeah. 
So, and also, uh, oh, sorry, and also through sending pictures and videos, like we were able to connect to each other a lot. Sorry, go, Dora. Uh, um, a little bit, I think so. to me, um, working remotely through digital is a bit difficult and uh, not a bit difficult. It's really difficult and really challenging for me personally. And because um, uh, I, I like, it's hardly to, to connect with Chair, you know, because uh, we never met before and uh, like, and suddenly we start to work together in, in one project in, in a short period of time. And that, that's really uh, difficult. And, but somehow we, we find ways to, to connect, you know, sharing uh, daily, uh, daily photo, daily with also uh, uh, in, in in a, a moment, like in one point, we we start to we start to get to know each other better, you know. Mm. And and also to add up, like we, we did not um since we were paired for collaborate a collaborative work, I don't uh I don't think we pressured ourselves talking about work. Like we just started conversing, like like two people meeting to uh, meeting each other for the first time. Mm. So we just, I, I I we actually told each other that it would be easier for us to to share with each other if we started our friendship like drinking <laughs> or like being in the same place with Anna and Sophia. Like I guess we could you know better express ourselves and also the food we had yeah <laughs> okay so if i may uh so uh the, i read the question from uh using practice so thank you for sharing your process yeah for, and for dora we wanted to know more about your creative process do you start with the concept first or do you let the process reveal itself? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, Sorry, yeah. go for it. Uh, thank you so much um, um, for the question. I, so before, uh, before I start with the concept first, when, when I work, for example, when I work, when I work on uh, efficiency, uh, I start with the process. Uh, I start with the topic first. I, I want uh, which topic I want to work on and where I want to go. And and later on, uh, the process. Uh, and later on, I let the process really sell. Like for example, the the lab test work for the open studio at Sasa project. Yeah. I I think uh, in relation to this question, like we I think this was also one of the challenges that Dora and I experienced because I, uh, as I said earlier, I, I start, I don't really start with an idea when I work, like I let the um, materials dictate my process or inform my process, wherein Dora, um, he starts with a concept or an idea. And we had a hard time meeting in that, that's why maybe that's why we're still struggling with the collaborative work and and i guess yeah the conversations through emails has helped us find find a meeting point for us since we are always sharing a lot of images and videos to each other uh, this has become the bulk of our of our um, collaboration yeah Oh, yeah, this is also like uh, the answer for the another question that asks about what is the biggest takeaway of your experience with working to each other. Maybe you wanted to add a little bit more about this experiencing working with each other. Besides the connection and uh, can relate into food and all the video, maybe there's something that you interested to share. Um, mm. Go, Dora. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think only one thing I, 
uh, I want to mention is um, like don't don't be afraid of uh, 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 what should I say? Uh, <laughs> uh, working uh, with the other. Uh, mm, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you go first, yeah. I'm thinking. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if 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 um on top of everything, like I feel like this collaboration has helped me to become more open. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not normally like I'm not normally one uh, someone who will just talk emotionally to a stranger, <laughs> and. Dora is really a stranger to me, you know. Uh, I mean, we talk only on social media, mm-hmm. but uh, this this practice of talking to each other daily has helped us um, become more vulnerable. And in the sense, uh, a lot of things, a lot of um, like connections to our histories has been revealed because um, of these conversations. And this has taught me to, I, I guess, become more of what do you call this not really outspoken but to, to try to connect with other people mm-hmm. and be more open and sharing what's happening uh, with me or ar- what's happening around me thank you this is very beautiful step mm-hmm. um, <laughs> if i may uh, there's uh, another question from mara yeah. Well, oh. I, I remember my word. Um, okay, go on. Uh, mention a little bit. Uh, don't let the don't let the word of working remotely scare you. Is it? <laughs> oh, okay, nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Chileng. So, uh, another question from Mara. Uh, how how you are both able to bridge the gap in the process between more personal intention to product producing the work that engage in more social, uh, macro level, what's go on in your conceptual life process? Is it okay? Uh, well, for in, with our process, like in, in, conceptu- and in, in conceptualizing uh, for our process, mm-hmm. we, we did not, pressure ourselves in uh, what do you call this producing a work right away like in our conversations we let um, for example I'm gonna share something to Dora about um, what's happening in in our country like for example the the election the vaccination um, so in creating a personal relationship with Dora, we were able also to reveal like the, the more um, social or the, uh, or the more political things. Like not unintentionally, we were able to talk about these things, although uh, we did not pressure ourselves to converse about it. So in return, our, our, our end work um, reflects these like um for example uh the personal and our public spaces that we inhabit like we share them with each other and in this way we are able to i guess engage in a more macro level does that make sense yeah yeah dora you wanna add something Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, surprisingly, so we found out like we have so many things in common. Even the food, even the, uh, you know, even the small things, you know. Um, like if we, mm, if we look in general, we see like we, we are living in, in like, like, like really different countries, but actually, uh, there's there's still something you know we we have in common. Uh, even those like for example, um, cultures, uh, the the ghosts, 
and the food, you know, and the way we, uh, we, we talk, you know, like at the end still, you know, even though we speak, dif- uh, we speak a different language, but uh, some things that still holding back together, you know, I don't know how to say it, but yeah. Okay, interesting. So uh, another question though from Jerome. Uh, he interested to know more about the how uh, the coping from stress, uh, trauma from the pandemic, uh, political, and even doing art like meeting deadline. So uh, Jill already talked uh, a little bit about it, but uh, what about Sidling? Uh, how about you? How do you coping with the stress trauma during the pandemic? Oh, thank you so much. Um, I think uh, I've been stressing out a lot lately with, with the, you know, with a lot of work uh, besides the project and also the uh, commercial work. But um, I think personally, how I cope with it is a, uh, is talking to uh, my people and going out, yeah. And also, uh, I don't know, but I think some, uh, you know, work, working on this project, exchanging ideas through email or messenger is a way to release stress as well. Like when we share food and we talk about uh, something else, you know, like our our past experience. Hmm. But um, oh um, I mentioned uh, I want to mention uh one thing. Uh, last month um I was so stressed after the meeting with uh with them. Uh, I call uh Sophia and Anna and July and we went to compo together immediately. <laughs> wow. That's how I, I. That's how I cope with the stress. Yeah, with the pandemic thing, you know. Mm. They they mm. eat Korean food. That's how they cope with stress. They always send me Korean food. <laughs> uh, maybe spicy cat could help. Maybe you know. <laughs> so, uh, for Jill though, uh, the question is like uh, from Mara. So uh, Mara curious about the what guide your process of cutting or tearing uh, your shape. Is it uh, spontaneous or are there unconscious guidelines uh, you kind of end up following? Um, yeah, it's a very spontaneous process. Like um, I can't really explain how my shapes turn out. Like uh, it's already like a habit of my hand to turn my shape uh, to turn my cutouts into like shapes of mountains or stones mm. i guess i'm very drawn to landscapes or, or like natural forms yeah but i don't think there's a uh like a logical explanation why my cutouts are turned out that way mm. okay interesting so Yes, that's more question. I just read another question first. <laughs> okay, uh, question from uh, Lina, Lim Sukhan Lina. So working together online, uh, very challenging. So how does you both come up with the idea uh, or the project to work together for the show, like for the exhibition? Yeah, Dora, you want to go first? Uh, yes, uh, uh, yeah, I think um, it all started from, from Jill, like she proposed the idea of working on uh, email thread. Um, basically, uh, we also want, we also uh, going to make a, a, a collage video, combining two videos together, because uh, based on our background, you know, because I'm, um, uh, my my art practice is film and gel is collage, so we 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 work together. So uh, at the end, yeah, that produce a, a collage video. Hopefully, we show in the exhibition soon. So uh, 
So, uh, okay, the idea come from gel and you have with producing it. <laughs> no, no, the idea did not come from here. No, I, no, I actually encouraged that. Um, I mean, it's not the very intentional. The, the email thread, the archive of the email. At first, it was like I wanted to talk to Dora without the pressure of replying right away. Because sometimes I, I, I tend to. Um, not know what to reply right away. So the email conversation lets me, um, what you call this, think through first before, before saying it. And I am able to collate all my materials first before I send it to him. And yeah, so the idea is actually the idea of the videos and the idea of uh, our all uh, our whole um, collaboration was just revealed through the um, ongoing conversations and actually we would like to continue with our conversations even after this um, visualizing histories we talked about um, continuing the emails because mm -hmm. at, at, at one point it has also become like a relief for me I don't know if if it's the same with Dora like it's it's a huge relief for me to send him a letter of what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. Like close friend, informal. Yes, <laughs> not just like artists, but also as normal, like <laughs> like normal people <laughs> talking. It's like a, a a letter to a friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of conversations are 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 quick with you know chatting and you know sending emojis and we'd still like to keep that um what, uh, what do you call this how do i explain this um like I'd, I'd still like to keep that uh the form of letter writing where it's more um sorry i can't find the word <laughs> where it's more natural Okay. Or, or open, yeah. Letter to a friend. Sound like uh, uh, upcoming uh, short film, Dora. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't make a film out of this. <laughs> okay. So uh, a question from Mark. So just want to know about the working organically uh, which in terms of material then Dora more on research uh, the long process in the context of film there and in forced collaboration suddenly for a short period of time what did you or oh, this one is like you already emphasized a bit um, what did you explore or question on this process uh, the process of selection curation Destination assignment for this residency. Uh, so, what what did you uh, explore on on this process? Um. Well, in in this process, we tried to like ex we we let our con conversations like reveal how our process will go through like for example uh in in sending these emails like um like i collate the information from from the the, the news like for example i'm going to share about my the vaccination like i'm going to before sending it to dora like i'm going to research more on how i can Tell it to him like uh, in um, a more yeah concise way. So in this way, like for example, sharing through emails like the links, the news. Uh, in this way, uh, it helps us understand each other better. Uh, sorry, I think maybe uh, uh, that the question I think uh, he wanted to ask like, what do you think about the process of selection or curation? Like uh, the two of you together, 
how uh, what do you think about that like the selection uh, curation that uh, the project uh, match you to as a pair as a partner Dora, you want to try answering the, the question? Yeah. Um, I think I'm, I'm still not clear about the question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Mark, can, can you elaborate it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you, uh, Lina. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Hi, hello. So I'm, uh, I'm just curious because both of you work with like tedious process. So it takes a long time. It's mm -hmm. like you let the, the process or the research go, go to your direction or something like that. But, and then suddenly you are uh, parang enforced to work together for this, for, specific collab, uh, for this specific residency. So there's a parang input of selection and curation. So you are paired together that doesn't really know each other first, di ba? So I'm just wondering how you see it first, or are you anxious that oh I don't know if I can collaborate with the person. So I'm just mm -hmm. uh, it's a process of maybe yeah like uh, uh, questioning the mm -hmm. process because as you mentioned you work organically and then suddenly there's a prompt that you have to or Sikling is doing research and then suddenly you are paired. So mm -hmm. just want to know as an artist or a maker, how do you see this idea of curation that mm -hmm. uh, the museum collective uh, uh, put up to you? So something like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, yes, it is actually uh, like really challenging for the both of us to um, see how the the collaborative work will um go through like how to curate uh how to go uh, how to navigate the pairing for such a short period of time like for example me i have to gather my materials first for a very long time before i create my work and then seeking as a filmmaker needs like in making films, like you have really have a long time to do this. Uh, that's why for the collaboration, we did not we did not force a conversation about work right away. Like that's uh, maybe that's why I encourage uh, Seekling that we try to do the the emails first or try to converse first in a, in a very mundane, uh, uh, in, uh, to talk about the mundane things, to find, uh, uh, what do you call this? To find the uh, meeting point for the both of us. Was, was I able to answer it, Mark? Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> Dora, you wanna share something? Yeah, uh, thanks, Uma, for the question. Um, so, to me, it's it's really difficult for me because uh, before applying to this project, I I already had the concept in mind, like what I wanna do. Uh, basic, uh, basically, I want to make a documentary film about uh, PTSD during my my rush. But after I uh, I I got paired with Jell and and then I start to uh, to um, to worry like how can we how can we make it? Cause uh, I'm I'm not sure like I'm not hundred percent sure like if she into this kind of thing, you know. Cause um, uh, during the, our conversation, she mentioned that she want to let the the process flow itself. So so. Uh, I so I decide to 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 collaborate to collaborate with her with the email thread and and let the the process like go flow with itself yeah mm -hmm. 
And and yeah, but later on, I find that uh, it's also a, a, a good experience to to let you know to to let the work speak by itself. Like I mean, some email, and also uh, and also at the end of the day, it also uh, still reflects to my practice and her practice. Like we we gonna make a. Uh, collage widow so it's, it's still you know like I mean yeah I don't know <laughs> and, and you, also for, for me like I, I don't I don't see this collaboration like ending anytime soon like I feel like <laughs> this is just a starting point for me and Dora like I'm just starting to know Dora really and uh, for me like uh after visualizing histories, like if Dora has an idea about PTSD and want to work something about that, like I graduated uh, uh, with a degree in psychology, and maybe I can use that as, as uh, 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 to collaborate with him after this. Like uh, this was a good uh, starting point for the both of us to create something else uh, after this. Sorry, I'm super red on that. <laughs> yeah, it's great to know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, after this project, um, I'm, I'm gonna find a way to, to be there some someday, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah nice. Sound uh, interesting about uh, your collaboration. This is uh, what also a reason of the project to see the would collaborate together and uh, call you to create the artwork. That's a uh, real nice. Thank you. Um, so uh, the last question from uh, Mayumi, I think uh, maybe this question also could uh, Anna and Sophie join in. Um, the question is that it's, uh, it's the exchange, but uh, first uh, maybe uh, Jail and Sitling want to answer with the first question. Uh, is the exchange ex uh, expected to the result in collaborative artwork? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, at first, I, I did not think that there was an expected result or a collaborative work for the for the uh, for the whole project. But uh, the prompt for me was uh, for us. I think was how to make the experience physical for us, mm -hmm. even though we are far from each other. So in a way, sending um, Dora like images and videos, like everyday things, uh, this was, this became our sort of like um, non-physical residency. This became our connection uh for this project mm. okay maybe museum collective wanna uh, answer this question do you want me to do it or anna you do it okay i do um so the question <laughs> is so the question is um is the exchange expected to result in a collaborative artwork what was the curatorial from yeah you know um that was it was not um it was optional at the end when we when we pitched the idea to the artist pairs and when they were paired together um we were constantly reminding them that if it doesn't result to an artwork that's fine as long as you continue to you know talk to each other um because um that's why uh, when we were conceptualizing the whole project, we also made sure to include passwords. And those passwords already speak to the, the question, the main question that we have for the exhibit, for the whole project. So, um, but um, all of the artist pairs did decide to, to produce a work. <laughs> so, um, and, and 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 we are grateful for that. Um, 
because at the end like what we were saying um the the whole project doesn't end in exhibiting the works or because again it will be as prompts for for formal or uh, formal education or tradition or in spaces of traditional education that means um, high schools, elementary schools to talk about um, and communicate uh, these sensitive historical events in both countries. So, yeah. <laughs> so, did I answer your question? Did we answer your question, Naomi? Yes. Um, I also want to ask, because of the language differences, Right. Were you aware of this language difference when you were thinking about asking the artists to collaborate or engaging exchanges? And I also want to know what you learned from just observing these processes that the artists went through. This question is for yeah, museum collective. All right. Um, yeah, I think that was a big factor all throughout. But I think also when Sasa put out the statement, uh, a huge part of it was they have to be able to speak in English <laughs> because it's quite um, a difficult topic to talk about. So it'd be easiest if the artists involved are can speak English. And I think all of them speak English quite well and they're able to communicate what they want um, and it comes across to the to the pairs anyway, so I think it works fine. Um, and sorry, what's the second question? Um, so it's interesting. Like yesterday, mm -hmm. I was Eunice and Kanya, mm -hmm. and they shared their experience of exchanges or communication. Mm -hmm. And today, Jill and you know Dora shared, and all of them have different experiences, right? Yes. So as a mm -hmm. curator who gave it's kind of like an assignment that you gave to the artists. Mm -hmm. And what did you learn from observing I, these processes? Actually, we are quite surprised with how it turned out. Like they're all completely different, but somehow for us, they work well together. Like they all have their own little world, each artist pair, <laughs> but they managed to connect deeply, which is quite interesting for us. And I think the biggest part really of this project is just being able to connect to someone with someone else. The work is, at least for us, secondary. It's really their connection that we want um, the outcome to be. It's, it's how they're able to converse about these sensitive topics. And just by conversing about these topics, you're able to keep the history, the narrative of that past alive, which is, I think, what we really just wanted for this entire exchange program. So in the end, the exhibit and their new works are just like- um, Bonuses. Actually. Yeah, bonuses are um, physical embodiments of these conversations. So I think it's really just the pairing and their relationship. I think that's the biggest takeaway for us. So we find that we're really happy with what has been happening so far between all of them. And I really hope that in the future, they're still able to talk to each other. And I'm excited that Jell, for example, and, and Dora was able to think of maybe collaborating even further about T PTSD. So I'm so excited also for that if, if they do end up doing that in the future. So I think just starting like small communities of people who are able who are more empowered to talk about these things, that in itself is the biggest takeaway for us. And um, yeah, to add to that, um, it, it was also clear for us from the beginning that um, regardless of like the end result or what they will make out of it, how they see the prompt, we'll accept it and work with it. <laughs> I think, um, and like what Anna said a while ago, it's quite interesting that they responded to, to the prompt differently because it also shows how each, in a way, each person um, absorbs these historical events or takes it. Um, so, yeah, I think it, uh, uh, first and foremost, we are super grateful that all of the artists took on the challenge because I know, I mean, it, it's a pandemic. Then you're dealing with 
uh, sensitive topics, but they still took on the challenge of 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 trying to work together, and um and working together, and that speaks volumes in itself. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great talk. Thank you, Sophia. Can I ask one more question? <laughs> so, Rina, because Rina, you're also observing exchanges between the artists, mm -hmm. right? And what was your impressions or observations, if there is anything you could share with us? Okay. Uh, so, I think... Uh, so, for well, social architect, we have been do uh, a quite many collaboration, and uh, during this pandemic, I think uh, the online residency is quite uh, new to us. And for what I've been yes. observing, uh, is that this uh, collaboration is uh, we see how uh, the idea uh, uh, of this uh, our working uh, in particular topic, and that the artist find it uh, challenging, but then also uh, thinking uh, to find a new way to work with each other. So this is, uh, I think, what we call uh, creativity in artists, right? So um, to, uh, for, I think uh, this collaboration is quite uh, successful, uh, seeing that the, the ex artists uh, enjoying uh, doing uh, for what they're doing and even uh, continue to be further. So uh, for me, it's like uh, I looking forward to uh, see uh, also uh, anything that we could support, we wanted to willing to support, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mayumi, for the question. <laughs> okay, so... Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to Jill and Sidney for your artist of today. Um, before we end, should uh, Anna and Sophie wanted to share the next new? <laughs> or if I may, uh, Dora or Jill, you want to say something? Yes. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> oh, where are you? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So thank you for everyone who took time to listen today and who took time to listen to uh, the other artists as well um, for the past, for, uh, for the one that happened yesterday and last week. Um, last uh, announcements. Um, on November 27, have, on November 27, we have a panel discussion, and we are inviting everyone to join that as well. Um, it will happen the same time, um, and it will be moderated by independent art curator John Balaguer. Um, like what we said, um, this whole thing has an exhibition um, as like a culmination of the entire of the exchange. Um, and that exhibition will run through November 24 to December 17 at Sasa Art Projects and at the Museum Collective's website. And we'll be showing more details soon, especially for our um, for the people who are not here in Phnom Penh, so that you can catch it virtually. And then, yeah, um, see you all on the 27th. And hopefully see you virtually on the 24th during the opening of the online. And for those who are here in Phnom Penh, uh, for the opening of, of the on-site exhibit, uh, please do register. Um, there are slots for the on-site exhibition. You can visit Sasa Art, uh, Sasa Art Project's Facebook page to, to um, book your slot because of course there's still protocols when it comes to covid and we are still following those so yeah thank you to everyone before we end um we'll share you the the loop video that we made um that serves as documentation for the project so far yeah and yes and 
So the exhibit will be, the physical exhibit will have a limit. So we will be sharing the link of where you can register later on. It's only 15 people at a time because it's still the pandemic. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much again for joining us. Thank you for um, moderating this afternoon session to uh, Sasa Art Projects and Thank you as well to Jel and to Dora for presenting and sharing your works to us all. Again, everyone, thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us again. And for those who are still present, let's have a group photo. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> yes. Yay. All right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. Hi, Joel. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Again. One last. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Salamat. Congrats. Congratulations. Parang di kayo pagod. Hindi <laughs> 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 ano, yung beer lang. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hope to see Bye, you. Bye, Dara. Bye. Bye.